Hey everyone, today I've got a cool one. This is sort of a deep dive masterclass into Luma Labs Dream Machine. So even if you're old hat at AI video generation or you're just getting started, I do think that I have something for everyone here from basics to advanced ideas and concepts. Okay, let's dive in and check it out. Off the bat, and just to let you know, I did partner with Luma Labs for this video. That's actually a really good thing. This isn't meant to be a hard sell on Dream Machine, but rather serve as a resource for the basics and you know, provide some ideas in terms of advanced tips and tricks. If you're just getting started with AI video, Dream Machine does make it you know, pretty easy for you. All you have to do is type something into the prompt bar that you would like to see. In this case, we're gonna go with an old chestnut on the channel, a man in a blue business suit walking down a busy city street. Now, you'll notice that there is a little enhanced prompt tick box here. Um, we're gonna take a look at the output both with the enhance on and with the enhance off. So uh, let's first try it with enhance off. So with no enhancement, we end up with this guy, which, uh, you know, as a subject himself, he's okay. Uh, the video itself is kind of what we asked for. It is a man in a blue business suit walking down a busy city street. To note, he actually is on the sidewalk as well. A lot of times when I generate this prompt, he's standing in the middle of the street. That said, we do obviously have some problems here. A lot of the background is kind of morphy and out of focus, uh, almost as if it was attempting for a shallow depth of field, but it ended up kind of creating like these weird sort of ghost characters in the background. Now running that same prompt with prompt in hands on, uh, we end up with this guy who is walking down the middle of the street as so many of our men in a blue business suit are. Uh, overall, you can see with prompt enhancement on that the quality definitely does jump up a bit. There are of course some you know coherence problems. This woman here uh, kind of does a weird shimmy dance thing. She also uh, you know kind of morphs a little bit, but for the most part, I mean, you you know, people are walking in the correct direction here. The background of the city does look more or less correct. But I will say that when we start adding more intentionality into our prompt, well, that's where you're going to start seeing a lot more zazz. For example, modifying our prompt out to a cinematic shot of a man in a blue business suit walking down a busy city street at magic hour, shot on a 35 millimeter film camera, film grain, we end up with this as a result, which is obviously a lot more compelling than our initial output. Now, initially our shots will generate around five seconds or so, but we have the ability to extend them as well, uh, simply by hitting the extend button. This will extend your video out an additional five seconds and the result will be relatively seamless from the last frame of your previous generation. You also do have the option to add to your prompt here as well. And we now have an additional five seconds with the prompt, the man continues walking, lost in thought. It's probably wondering why no one ever walks on the sidewalk in these cities. Now, I do wanna point out that you don't necessarily have to prompt with a bunch of cinematic terminology. You can use natural language, although we are gonna circle back to uh, you know cinema terms in just a minute. Uh, but for example, on the natural language side, something like a tranquil forest clearing at sunset with sunlight filtering through the trees and a gentle breeze rustling the leaves. Soft wildflowers bloom along the path and a family of deer grazes peacefully nearby, creating a serene and enchanting atmosphere. The aesthetic of the resulting output is actually kind of interesting. It's almost like a hybrid between animation and live action. Although if we are talking about animated deers, I think I know where this is going. Interestingly, Luma themselves note that Dream Machine responds you know, pretty strongly to emotional cues in callouts. Uh, for example, here where we just take the same prompt and add the video should feel peaceful and calming. Uh, this is the result, which you know, there is definitely a much more musical muted, subdued kind of quality to the output that does feel more peaceful. Although again, if animated movies about deer have taught me anything, uh, we're like two seconds away from that piece being shattering and a whole bunch of kids crying. So once again, just to illustrate, taking a basic prompt without prompt enhance on uh, something like a woman in a red summer dress walking on the beach. I think she's the ex-wife of the man in the blue business suit. She left him because of all those jaywalking tickets. Our resulting output, well, it's just kind of, it's okay. I mean, there are obviously some decoherence issues here and there, but overall, from a compositional standpoint, I mean, it's just kind of boring. Uh, you know, we have that straight horizon line back there. 
our subject is full body, but you know, it just, the whole thing kind of lacks a little bit of dynamics. But again, swapping up the prompt a little bit to an intimate close up of a woman in a red summer dress strolling along a tranquil beach at sunset captured on a vintage 50 millimeter lens with the soft bouquet effect. I mean, the results are obviously much more compelling. Now, because I had a number of details in here, I did leave prompt enhance off on this. And this is something that, I don't know, maybe to be aware of is that when you are adding in more details and you turn prompt enhance on, it may catch some details that you were not necessarily expecting. For example, when we said captured on a vintage 50 millimeter lens, it took that uh, quite seriously. And while look, I know that this was not necessarily what we were looking for, I do think it is I don't know, it's kind of cool. And that's something that I always uh, try to hit home with AI video is that, you know, just be open to happy accidents. Briefly, before we move on to image to video, which I know is the thing that most of you are usually interested in, I did want to talk about the loop tick box. Um, you know, this is something that I, I actually, truthfully, I don't use it that much. Although I do think that there are some really cool and creative ideas that you can accomplish with it. Uh, and it's a very baseline. It kind of does what it says. So taking something like abstract swirling colors, providing a sense of calm and running that, and indeed, we do end up with this kind of like you know, screen savory looking thing. And I would think that if you extend this out a few times, you know, you might have something that would be interesting to use as like a video installation or maybe, you know, hook up to a projector. That said, just because I don't use the feature a lot does not mean that there aren't a ton of cool and interesting creative applications for it. Uh, as Jared Liu proves here with, uh, I don't know, this image of like idea guy is what I'll call him. Um, as you can see, the camera kind of circles around. I believe this is an extension. Um, and then the idea breaks. Uh, and at this point, we are now back at the loop. I just noticed as well that there are a bunch of other uh, light bulbs that are sort of scattered in the background, kind of implying that the loop is infinite and has gone on plenty of times before that. So very nice work here, Jared. Tatiana Segluvia gives us another example of loops in action with these, uh, these guys standing in a line. And you can see right about here, we're now back to that initial frame. So yeah, it definitely works. Although I will warn that loops can be a bit on the finicky side. So it very heavily depends on what your initial frame is. So I do think that it tends to work best in sort of more of these atmospheric uh, type shots as opposed to like narrative. You know what? I want to walk that back. If you can figure out a way to make, you know, sort of like weird abstract loops work in a narrative, I mean, go for it. That's what this stuff is here for. So sliding over to image to video, which is the thing that I think that, you know, everybody's usually most excited about. Uh, we'll begin with this image of this astronaut who is definitely doomed. I mean, just look at him. He is definitely doomed. Now we can just take this image and directly drop it in uh, and then run it without a prompt. Now Luma's documentation does say that they do recommend that if you're going to run an image to video without a prompt, they do recommend having enhanced prompt on. So uh, running that, we end up with this, which, you know, is a pretty fair shot. We did not give it any direction or details. So uh, yeah, you know, I mean, he's fairly inert, but uh, let's see what we can do by hitting the extend button. So as of Dream Machine 1.6, we now have camera controls. Um, so if you begin by prompting, or actually anywhere in your prompt, uh, by beginning to write the word camera, you'll notice that we now have a pull down of camera left, camera right, up, down, in, and out. Um, so let's begin with a move up. Uh, to note, you can't actually go and click into this, at least not on my browser. I actually have to go uh, manually scrolling up and down with the up and down arrows um, and then hit enter. Um, so I'm gonna put camera move up and then uh, we'll do like reveals an alien. And indeed we now have, uh, you know, roughly a 10 second shot in which our camera begins to pull up uh, and reveals an, al an alien, I guess. I mean, we didn't give it much direction in terms of what the alien is. And he just kind of appears, I don't know, maybe he's a space vampire. Like space vampires can just morph in from the darkness. Um, What's always interesting to me is in this area to continue on with another extend and now let's move the camera to the right. So now we have this 15 second shot. And again, this is the thing that I really enjoy kind of working with Dream Machine with is uh, is just kind of letting it do its thing. Because, you know, at this point, as it starts pulling back, you can see like just the hint of something coming in from the corner. Um, it's fascinating to me that Dream Machine in this latent space, it, it really wants to 
generate some kind of narrative. So if not given one, it will just start to create stuff. Now that said, of course you can issue prompts with your image to videos. And I, I do encourage you to do so as well. Uh, so taking this image, uh, which we generated in flux a few videos back, this is a cyberpunk woman with long white hair wearing black armor. And I believe in the prompt, uh, we put that her expression tells us that she knows that she's leading these three shadowy figures into a trap. The debate, of course, being, does that expression say, I'm leading you into a trap? Now, my general tactic with image to video is just to kind of modify the initial image prompt. Uh, obviously, you can take out details about the character. Like, we don't need long white hair and black armor because obviously that's visually represented here. Um, so, you know, the prompt just becomes the woman walks forward as the camera pulls out. Her expression tells us that she's leading the characters behind her into a trap. Again, up for debate as to whether that expression conveys that. But what's sort of fun is that, you know, we can hit the extend button here. And with the extension, when we add the prompt, the woman looks directly at the camera and gives a knowing smile. Uh, I mean, this expression says, I'm leading them into a trap. I should point out that we do actually have additional camera controls here as well. For example, if we prompt move, uh, there is a number of options, move up, down, left, or right. We can also issue a push as in a push in or if we say orbit, we can orbit left or right. Now I, I will caution that a lot of times this will be dependent on where you are in your video generation, but I mean, you know, feel free to give any of them a try. Writing out on this part of image to video, uh, there's this thing that I always like to do where I try to incorporate some of the most famous cinematic sequences in all of history. And in this case, we actually ended up running a image to video extension of the opening shot from a clockwork orange. So this is uh, two extensions, uh, simple camera pull out as the prompt. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it kind of works. It's, it's not the shot, but it also kind of is. So now moving over to one of the more powerful features in Dream Machine, uh, but often misunderstood, we do have the ability to keyframe beginning and end frames. I think it's best illustrated by once again, returning to a clockwork orange uh, and providing this frame as our first image. And then as you'll note, we have the ability to add an end frame as well. So um, let's take this shot, which actually, if you've seen the movie, this is about as far as I can take it before we move into like YouTube, you're in trouble land. Uh, so uh, it is very much an R rated movie if you have never seen it. So adding in that second frame as our end frame here, uh, I'm just going to issue the prompt camera pull out. And we pretty much have the clockwork orange shot. Why would you want to do this? I mean, I don't know. The shot exists. This is really just to illustrate how this works. Although I will say that you do have the option of reversing the shots. If you come over here to this little arrow here, uh, you can swap them as such. Uh, and let's just see what happens without a prompt. And indeed, as we would suspect, we now have a push in instead of a pull out. Now, where I think that first frame end frame can sometimes get a little confusing, when you have two images that are too far apart from one another, uh, for example, here, uh, you know, I have this image of a wizard holding an orb and an epic battle scene, uh, feeding that into first frame, last frame, you know, the, there was just the kind of too much to juggle here, but where I think it really can fly is when you provide it with kind of more abstract imagery, such as, uh, this image and this image, and then combining those two together, uh, in first frame, last frame, we get this, which I, I, I think is pretty cool. It does work with kind of photographic cinematic images as well. Uh, for example, taking this image and this image and then running them in first frame, last frame, we get something like this, uh, which also looks really pretty awesome. Another idea is to take a image like this generated in mid journey and then 2X zoom it out, providing that to Dream Machine as a first and last frame. And running that, we end up with this very, you know, cinematic shot. I do love the fact that it actually gives like the train some camera shake there as well. Rounding out with two, uh, I don't know, I hesitate to call them tricks, maybe more like interesting ideas you might want to pursue. Uh, for one, I don't know if you're aware, but Luma actually has like a whole other side as well uh, with interactive scenes, uh, mostly involving Gaussian splats that you can generate on your phone. Indeed, this was my first introduction to them. Uh, yeah, they have this whole app where you can basically shoot in app and uh, create 3D scenes of any environment that you're in. Uh, it's kind of cool because after the whole thing processes, you can actually, you know, find your generation over on the web as well. Uh, so you're not just limited to the phone. And yeah, there is essentially an entire like 3D representation 
of uh, this scene. Um, all done in Gaussian splatting. It's pretty interesting. Um, so my thought was like, uh, maybe we could take two of these and run them as first and last frames. And the results, I have to say, were actually pretty compelling. So yeah, that's a, you know, 3D Gaussian splat, um, you know, two points of it, a camera move. And, uh, you know, I, I will admit that the, our actress here is, it's very minimal movement, but still, um, yeah, it works. El Cine also had this, I, I think this kind of more works in the realm of trick shot. This is something that I very much see in like a Guillermo del Toro, like ghost movie. Um, yeah, so the way that he accomplished this was by first generating up this mirror image and then in painting the characters out, uh, bringing that into first frame, last frame. And he issued the prompt rush here. He ended up with this, following that with an extension with the prompt breakdown gave us the final shot. So yeah, I of course had to give it a shot. So my version began with the prompt ghost and then followed by the extension more ghosts. And uh, this is what we got much more subdued than El Cine's original one, but yeah, uh, it works. So I hope that this provided you with a good foundation of the basics of Dream Machine, along with some ideas that you can explore in the more advanced areas. And I really do want to hit home that you don't need to get lost in a lot of like advanced ideas and complex prompt structures. You can just take images that you generate, uh, throw them into Dream Machine and, you know, see what comes out as I did here with this very short atmospheric piece. And look, while I realize that, you know, that which I made in like 10 minutes is not necessarily winning any awards or anything, the idea that say two years ago, that would be generated in AI was completely and totally unthinkable. The point being, I guess, just have fun. So yeah, head over to Luma Labs and give Dream Machine a shot. And once again, my thanks to Luma Labs for partnering with me on this video. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.